took his high-powered rifle and actively engaged the troopers, it was at this time the emergency support team shot to protect themselves. A shootout with police ends with a man being killed in Gladwin County. Early this morning, police were called on reports of shots being fired. That's when they say they found a man walking down a road with a gun. The situation escalated as the man started shooting at police. Charlie Lapastor from our sister station, ABC 298, has been in Gladwin County all day. He tells us what led up to this bizarre situation first at 5 tonight. Police say a man is dead after he was shot and killed by an emergency response team earlier this morning. The officers here today did what they had to do to survive. Michigan State Police say around 4 in the morning Thursday, Gladwin County deputies were driving down Shock Road in Tobacco Township and saw a man walking down the road. They say that man, 50-year-old Mark Gary, started shooting at the deputies with a high-powered rifle and shot one of the deputy car's tires. The police car was disabled. The deputies placed it in reverse, were able to escape. Uh, they backed up the road and called for additional officers. When those officers arrived, so did the emergency response team who surrounded the home Gary fled to. Police say Gary's wife was in the home with him and that Gary fired multiple shots outside, including shooting at the officers that surrounded him. That's when police say one of the officers shot Gary, which eventually killed him. That high-powered rifle, it's, uh, those bullets can travel an extremely long distance. And as you look around, there are other houses in the area. Even though they're not on top of one another, a high-powered rifle could very easily enter one of these other residences and travel completely through. One of those neighbors close by is Dick Brushaber. He farms on 10 acres of land right in front of Gary's home and has known him for more than 10 years. He woke up to this note from his daughter Thursday morning. She came home for midnights and had a note on the table when we got up that something was going on with Mark over there. Your shooting's all over. That's just something standard today. You don't very often hear of it here in Gladwin County, but it happens. From an officer's standpoint, with the turn of events across the nation right now, when you're dispatched to a shots fired call, and then a man opens fire on you in an ambush situation, it is a life or death situation. State police are using a drone to get a bird's eye view of the home the man was in. Reporting in Gladwin County, Charlie Lapastora, 7 and 4 News. Well, the officer involved in the shooting has been placed on administrative leave while a complete investigation into the incident is conducted. The investigation will be a joint one with both the Michigan State Police Post in West Branch and the Gladwin County Sheriff's Office. Sexual assault charges could put a Chippewa County pastor behind bars for life. 62-year-old Jonas Moses Jr. now faces eight counts of sexual assault, two of those in the first degree. Moses Jr. was arrested last week in Wisconsin. Police say evidence collected at a Brimley home and Sault Ste. Marie Church led them to the suspect. The complaint against Moses Jr. lists more than one victim. He's being held in jail tonight without bond. Drug team detectives say they found a marijuana grow operation in Luce County. The Upper Peninsula Substance Enforcement Team seized more than 50 marijuana plants from an open area near Fordney Road and M123 in McMillan Township. So far, no one has been arrested, but the investigation is still open tonight. 22-year-old Chad Matson is behind bars in Grand Traverse County after allegedly breaking into at least four area homes. Sheriff's Office tells us Matson stole jewelry worth more than $10,000 from three homes in Peninsula and Garfield Townships between December and January. Deputies believe Matson could be involved in other criminal cases and is looking into other suspects as well. Matson will be back in court at the end of the month. The channel connecting Lake Michigan and Portage Lake is in danger of collapsing. In fact, the channel, built in 1939, is described by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers as having a high risk of failure. Today, members of the Corps met with local and state leaders to talk about options to keep the channel open and make the necessary repairs. The channel is owned by the federal government, but the Corps says a lack of federal funding has helped lead to the channel's deterioration. What they're saying right now is, is that, well, without money, without money, uh, we're sorry. All right? We're sorry. Even if it falls in. Even if it falls in. One estimate pegs the cost of repairing the channel at $6 million. But to even get to that point, the Corps needs to show the Portage Lake Channel is a priority over other projects vying for limited federal dollars. Former Michigan
Michigan Representative Cindy Gamrat filed papers today to try and get reelected to the House seat she was expelled from just last week. The Republican is one of five running in Allegan County's November 3rd special primary election to fill her own vacant seat. Gamrat was kicked out of Lansing last week for her role in covering up an affair she was having with fellow rep Todd Corser. Corser hasn't said if he'll make a run at his empty seat so far. Well, the second Republican debate lived up to the billing. There were personal attacks, but most of the talk last night was about the issues and how each candidate differs. Candidates voiced their stances on everything from foreign policy to health care and even what they would want their Secret Service code name to be. All eyes were on Donald Trump, though, but several other candidates seemed to make big leaps from the first debate earlier this year. In just a few minutes, right here on TV7 and 4 News at 5, we're going to take a much more extensive look at last night's debate and see which candidates may have separated themselves from that pack. One topic of last night's debate was the Iran nuclear deal. Several candidates had harsh criticism of the agreement, most notably Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. Today's the deadline day for congressional action on the deal, and Republican lawmakers don't have many options for striking it down. Meanwhile, Iran's supreme leader is ratcheting up anti-American and anti-Israeli sentiment. Here's national correspondent Jeff Barnd with this week's Safe and Secure report. It's the Senate. Even as Democratic lawmakers on Capitol Hill work to blunt Republican efforts to kill the nuclear deal, that in Iran's Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei was in no mood to extend a peace offering, much less a handshake, despite his nation getting what it has long sought, the lifting of crippling economic sanctions. Khamenei's hatred toward America and Israel is on display in Tehran. This sign says America will be under Iran's shoes. Another one reads, God willing, in 25 years, there will be no such thing as a Zionist regime. So Former really Pentagon have... official Michael Rubin says Khomeini now holds all the cards. The Supreme Leader is still on the fence. Some security experts say Khomeini's harsh language should have been enough for Americans to take pause. Robert McFarlane was national security advisor to President Ronald Reagan. Very ambitious, committed leadership in Iran that wants a nuclear weapon is going to be able to get it under this very flawed agreement. So it's misguided. For supporters of this deal, Supreme Leader Khomeini's bluster is no more than idle chatter. This is the best way to avoid a nuclear uh, Iran. But Rubin, now with the American Enterprise Institute, says it's important to remember the deal is not done. Khomeini has not given his blessing. So we could be in a situation where the United States supports the deal, the Europeans support the deal, the Russians and the Chinese support the deal, but it is still possible that the Iranians will walk away. And regardless of what the Iranians do, Rubin says don't look for Khomeini to soften his tone anytime soon. In Washington, I'm Jeff Barn reporting. Now, all of this comes on the heels of a growing minority disapproval of the Iranian nuclear agreement. A new Washington Post ABC News poll shows 41 percent are against it. Back home in Michigan, a bill encouraging EpiPen injectors to be stocked at sports arenas, camps, churches, and businesses is moving to the Senate. The House voted 103 to 0 to pass the bill. The measure would let doctors prescribe and pharmacists hand out EpiPens to public and private organizations. The proposed law also would create storage and training requirements and limit liability from possible lawsuits. $900 million. That's how much General Motors now has to pay to resolve criminal charges connected to the automaker's ignition switch defects. The company must also admit it failed to tell anyone about the safety defect, which has been linked to at least 169 deaths. GM will also spend $575 million to pay families affected by the actions. Prosecutors say it would have cost GM less than a dollar to fix each ignition switch. American Airlines flights in several cities have been grounded for hours today. A computer outage started before noon. That stopped flights to Dallas-Fort Worth, Chicago O'Hare, and Miami International Airports. Several flights out of Cherry Capital and Traverse City were also delayed. American Airlines says the problem was fixed around 2 this afternoon. Well, the Northern Michigan landmark could soon be on license plates driving on highways all around Michigan. State senators approved a bill today to make a fundraising plate for Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. People who buy them pay a $25 donation and a $10 service fee. All money raised would go to the nonprofit Preserve Historic Sleeping Bear. 
The fundraising plate bill will now go on to the Michigan House. After 14 years, Sleeping Bear Dunes Superintendent Dusty Schultz is retiring. Her last day at the park will be November 2nd. She, Schultz told us the most memorable moment of her career in northern Michigan was the National Lakeshore's designation of wilderness of the park last year. She says she's most looking forward to traveling and reading non-government related literature in her retirement. I hope she enjoys it. This is what made this assignment so nice for me is because I had a chance to learn a lot about the natural environment and the history that we have here as well as providing those recreational opportunities that visitors just come here to love and enjoy. Besides her 14 years in northern Michigan, Schultz has worked for the National Park Service for a total of 42 years. The Father Fred Foundation in Traverse City stuffed backpacks today in hopes of keeping students fed over the weekends. This is their first blessings in a backpack event. Students in need can get a free meal at school during the week, but when the weekend comes, they might have to go without. So to help change that, Father Fred volunteers, Mayor Michael Estes, and Traverse City Area Public School Superintendent Paul Soma helped fill backpacks for 230 students from 11 schools. The bags are filled with cereal, fruit, canned goods, and a few treats as well. They may be part of a family that has um, other um, situations, whether there be some substance abuse in the family or domestic violence or whatever, we don't know, but that the family life may be chaotic and unstable. So this is an opportunity um, to make sure that those kids, regardless of their home situation, have a little bit of food over the weekend. Hazi says it costs $144 per student for the whole year. The students will continue to get a bag of food every week. A reminder, you can always get the latest news and weather anytime by logging on to our website, upnorthlive.com. We don't need an apprentice in the White House. We have one right now. It was billed as must-see TV, the second Republican presidential debate didn't disappoint many. The top 11 polling candidates all got a chance to have their voices heard. We'll hear who took the most advantage of that opportunity next. You're watching 7 and 4 News at 5.